stopping what they're doing and initiating a preferred task. So the, the skill of being able to stop what you're doing and begin a non-preferred task without chronic procrastination or elevated emotions is a crucial, crucial skill. To get doing your homework, getting ready for school in the morning, so important for them to be able to initiate a non-preferred task. And time management is really the ability to estimate time. And really what the research is showing now is it's the ability to see your time. It's the ability to visualize your time. Visualize yourself in a different time and space than where you currently are so you're able to manage your time and manage yourself. Like all of us right now, I'm sure, have already pictured ourselves leaving and either going to the airport, going back to the hotel, and what's, what they're doing after here. So it, it, we have already done this subconsciously, but there's, uh, there's our, our kids and our students with ADHD or chromosome disorders could really use the assistance in learning how to see their time. Uh, organization is really the ability to maintain systems of information. Uh, a lot of us today use our Google Calendar, our iPhone Calendar, alarms. Uh, we have our systems of organization. We, we are able to independently create these systems and stick to them. Show up to work on time, leave work on time, follow through on all your responsibilities. Uh, this is something that some of these kiddos really, really uh, struggle with. And of course, there's persistence. So after task initiation, yes, you have begun this, non this non-preferred task. You have started this task that you simply do not want to do. This is a non-preferred task. This is not gratifying to me in, the, in, the, in that place and time, but you also have to be able to persist. Persist from task initiation to task completion all the way till the end. And that's putting off competing interests. Finishing your homework without playing on your phone. Finish your homework without getting distracted. Very important to initiate and persist. Of course here, and then we have the two very special skills. These are crucial, crucial skills for lifelong success that if you are able to build, if you are able to build these skills in your child, this is a wonderful, wonderful thing that should always be celebrated. This is huge. Uh, first is the ability to uh, metacognition. Uh, these metacognitive skills, these higher level cognitive, cognitive skills. The ability to stand back, focus, and self-evaluate. The ability to look back on the past, which is that working memory, of course, from before, organization of internal language, internal information, and be able to ask yourself, how did I do? How am I doing? How can I improve next time? Think about it. Like How great of a skill is that for a child to be able to look back on the past, self-evaluate, and improve? That's going to set them up for huge success, and that's such a, a mature skill to have. Uh, for resilience, uh, basically the ability to bounce back from any sort of adversity, misfortune, or change. So that's if they were bullied at school, if they got a bad grade on a test, if they studied a ton and things didn't work out for them, uh, if they weren't able to make friends with someone they wanted to be friends with, it's the ability to bounce back, remain positive, have that growth mindset, which I will talk about within this presentation, and be able to succeed, continue to succeed. Resilience and metacognition, huge skills that I'm always preaching to elementary, middle, high school, college kids. These are crucial skills for individual success. Uh, so executive functions and resiliency. Uh, children who develop strong executive function skills experience lifelong benefits. So we saw this with the marshmallow study. Those kids went on to do some incredible things. And if you have a child, elementary school, middle school, high school, that has the ability to self-evaluate, maintain systems of organization, manage their own time independently, to the point where the parents are not being the frontal lobe of the brain, they're not being the frontal lobe for the children constantly exhausting themselves. This is huge for the children to be able to have these, uh, these independent skills 